Wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Wilson present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander in Chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> And now, today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, Return to Planet X. A blasted heap of rubble. That's all that remains of the camouflage launching base on Jupiter Moon Number 4, aiming point from which Prince Baccarati planned to hurl guided missiles across half a million miles of space to destroy two key cities on the planet Jupiter. Last week, we learned how Commander Corey and Cadet Happy arrived just in time to blast the missile chutes and control blockhouse to bits with a space torpedo from the Terra 5. It's now a few moments later. Buzz and Happy have landed on moon number four while the last grains of dust from the explosion are falling swiftly to the surface of the airless satellite. Wearing spacesuits and carrying portable disintegrators, they cautiously approach the shattered structure. Take it easy, Happy. Don't go charging into that mess. Hey, Commander. But you don't think anybody could still be alive in that wreckage? I think we've learned not to take anything for granted where Bob Cody is concerned. Whoever was in that control station may have been wearing a space suit. You're right. Uh, this looks like a chunk of control panel, huh? Let's get to work with the disintegrators. Yes, sir. Remember, if there's someone alive under this masonry, we want to keep them that way. So don't blast too deep with the disintegrator. Just reduce the chunks of concrete to a size we can lift. Yes, sir. Many feet below the surface of the moon, right under where Buzz and Happy are searching for survivors, Prince Baccarati and Dr. Malengo huddle in the corner of an underground room. What was that? I don't know, Your Highness. Uh, perhaps they have found a passage leading down to this escape tunnel. Go to the connecting door and investigate. Very well, Your Highness. Well, can you see through the people? There is no hurry. We can blast off until we're sure there is no space patrol ship watching this part of the moon. However, we can work our way down to the center of the planet.
metal door, Hap. Let's see if we can open it. An airlock. You didn't enclose the door, Hap. Let's check these indicators. Here's a gauge for passage air pressure. 0.8 atmosphere. Then, Parker, you wouldn't need a space suit inside the tunnel. Right. We can open our face plates after we open the inner door. Better close the door behind us, Hap. Wow, what a tunnel. I wonder how far it goes. Possibly a couple of miles. Perhaps more. Let's get going. We have quite a hike ahead of us. Marengo, what's the matter with you? Stop pacing back and forth. I'm sorry, my hands. I feel uneasy. What about? I don't know. I suppose it's being imprisoned at this time. What do you mean, imprisoned? In a few minutes, we'll be in a spaceship on our way back to Planet X. Of course, Your Highness, you're right. But suppose the space patrol does discover the hangar entrance to the tunnel. If they Ah, to... stop manufacturing trouble. The hangar entrance is about camouflage. The thing for us to do is plan what we're going to do when we get back to Planet X. Our number one project, of course, will be to get rid of Commander Corey. It shall receive my entire attention, Your Highness. Good. That will leave me free to solve our difficulties with our captive natives in the Arctic region of Planet X. That has been worrying me, too. When we last left Planet X, they were on the verge of revolt. We simply must keep those in Durian minds in full production. Already I'm weeks behind in my timetable of conquest. There must be some way to terrify those natives into more effort. It is unfortunate, Your Highness, that some of your own men, your, your guards and supervisors, are not cooperating as they should. Listen! What's that? Someone's in the tunnel. They've discovered our spaceship. Oh, wait, wait, listen. Take a look through the door of this compartment toward the blood house in the tunnel. Do see anything? That's very dim, I think. I thought I saw some shadow. Get away from the people. There is somebody in the tunnel. They just come through the door from the other compartment. Right. Space patrolmen, obviously. Who else could they be? For the rest of the ship. Oh, let's finish them off. Get me a glass gun from the rock. Oh, it's kind of lying and twist so much. I've lost all sense of direction. Judging by the upper slope of the floor, we're not far from the end of it. Hit the ground, Hap. That's a glass gun. Fuck around, see this. Shotgun got over my head. I need to send over before he fires again. I dropped it when I hit the floor, sir. So it's out of reach. I'll get it. Get down, Hap. I'm fastened now, Corey. All I got to do is keep blasting away till I hit you. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. And now, gang, the most exciting news ever revealed on Space Patrol. News about a gigantic contest that's going to shake this planet like an earthquake. News about the biggest prize ever given away to any boy or girl. A prize that's going to rock you like a thundering explosion. And that prize is Commander Corey's own rocket ship. Yes, Space Patrollers. Commander Corey is actually giving away his great silver and scarlet spaceship, Terra 4, giving it away to some lucky boy or girl. Now, just imagine, a huge 10,000-pound all-metal spaceship, 35 feet long, almost as big as a house, and that's exactly what it is, a clubhouse on wheels. Now, just think, a rolling rocket clubhouse, especially equipped with lights, real sleeping bunks, space lockers, even a cooking stove, and a giant truck to pull it. Take you and your pals anywhere you want to go. Can't you just see yourself zooming down the road toward high adventure, headed out camping, hiking, on sightseeing trips aboard your rocket clubhouse on wheels? And here's something else you want to see. Dollar bills. $1,500 bills. $1,500 that comes as first prize along with the rocket clubhouse. That's right. The first prize in this terrific contest is a gigantic rocket clubhouse and a real truck 
and $1,500. Now that's what one of you space patrollers will win. Say, here comes Carol with something that 750 of you are going to win. Second prize, 750 Schwinn Varsity Bicycles. Terrific fight, space patrollers. Schwinn, America's best. With three-speed gearship and two-wheel handbrakes. And third prize, a thousand third prizes, a thousand pieces of regulation space patrol equipment. 250 autosonic rifles. 250 outer space helmets. 250 emergency kits. And 250 beautiful space patrol wristwatches. Now, space patrollers, it takes only one word to win Buzz Corey's rocket ship or a Schwinn bike or one of the thousand other swell prizes. Now, sit tight, because right after today's space patrol adventure... I'm going to tell you about the one word that can bring you the great rocket clubhouse rolling up to your home. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, return to Planet X. Buzz and Happy are in a tunnel on the fourth moon of Jupiter, trying to overtake Prince Baccarati before he can escape from Planet X. Baccarati and Dr. Malengro have discovered the two space patrolmen. Through a compartment door in the tunnel, Baccarati is firing into a dim passageway with a blast gun. Lying flat on the floor near a stack of crates, Buzz and Happy so far have not been injured. Oh, that was close, Commander. You get a show. Let's go. Roll to the right behind those crates. Hurry. There. If I only hadn't dropped that disintegrator, probably wouldn't hit Baccarati from this distance anymore. Anyway. Hurry! Now you! I can't see you now, so you're probably behind the stack of crates. But that's not going to protect you. Yeah. I'm looking ahead to space suit helmet on, sir. That last shot clipped a chunk of crate right next to my head. As we think of something, Buck Rodney can just take his time and blast those crates away to the Texas. If we were only a little closer to him, we could rush him. Hey, maybe we could goad him into coming toward us. Yeah, Buck Rodney. It doesn't take unnecessary chances. Yeah, this might do it. This big metal gun. Rocket fuel will help me drag it out into the passage. But sir, if you think the whole tunnel will blow up. Exactly. Remember now, a full container of fuel is very heavy. Give me a hand. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, but sir, this, this is... Quiet. Quiet. Better hold your fire, Baccarati. No, we want to surrender, I suppose. No, I'm just warning you. We're pushing a drum of rocket fuel out into the tunnel. Hit that with your blast gun and you'll be shot through this tunnel like a torpedo through a space cannon. Uh, you're bluffing. You'd be killed, too. You're determined to finish us off anyway. Come on, Happy, push it out. Roll it toward Baccarati. Yes. All right, Baccarati, go ahead and shoot. Uh, you can stay in the tunnel. He's given up, sir. He locked the compartment. Stay behind the fuel gun, Happy. Go to the door. Yes, sir. I can keep moving now. Get to the center. Get to the Here's the disintegrator, sir. Get the door blast. Yes, sir. Hmm, something's wrong. It won't work. Fall to the stone floor. Probably broke the discharge mechanism. Gone, and now we'll have to go clear back to the other end of the tunnel for the other disintegrator. By that time, Buckley, you'll be probably a week spaceship. Let's get back to our ship, Happy. Hey, Commander, I'd like to ask you something. Sure, Happy. Huh? Well, don't you feel well? I mean, do you feel weak or something? No, why? Well, that field gun, I could have lifted it easily by myself. It, it was empty. Sure it was, huh? Come on, let's hurry back to the ship. Meanwhile, Baccarati and Malengro have reached the other end of the tunnel where a small spaceship sits poised, its sharp nose almost touching the heavy metal gate that seals the entrance of the hangar. With a last glance down the tunnel, Baccarati climbs into the ship, followed by Malengro. Quickly, the prince presses a button that operates the remote control mechanism, and the huge gates slide back. Through the nose port, the two men look out into a black curtain of space dotted with bright, unwinking stars. Put on the view scope, Lingo. We'll see if any spaceships are out there before we blast off. Yes, Your Highness. We can't cover a very wide angle while we're still in the tunnel. But if it looks clear, we'll have to risk a blast off. There are no patrol ships visible, Your Highness. All right. We're blasting off. And I hope Corey managed to break through that compartment door back there. In fact, 
I hope he's right behind our ship when I put on our rockets. Good. With our radar foil covered all, we can confuse their view scope. Now, well, to contact my cattle, planet X, and report that I'm returning. Prince Baccarati calling back walking castle on planet X. Prince Baccarati to number one power. Report immediately. Black Falcon Castle to your highness, Prince Baccarati. Murdoch speaking and awaiting your orders, sire. I'm returning to planet X in a class B space cruiser. Alert the defense stations to expect my code signal at the outer perimeter. Yes, your highness. Uh, do you have anything to report? Well, uh, yes, your highness. And it's in regard to the Adria mine situation at the Polar Camp. Oh, well, let's have it, Murdoch. Production in mine area five is at a complete standstill. Standstill? Why? There's been a large scale revolt. Six labor battalions refused to work. That's against my law. Tell the supervisors to drive the ringleaders out into the ice cap without food or protective clothing. Your Excellency. The supervisors, I regret to report this, sire, but the supervisors have sided with the slaves. They refuse to enforce that order. That's unheard of. Refusing to obey the orders of Prince Bakarati? All right. If that's the way they're going to play, I'll wipe them all out. Turn on the atomic heat reflectors at mine area five. Out the glacier. Do you understand? Down them all like rats. Turn on the heat reflector. Just put it in the trunk now. Put it in place and we'll do as they're told. I'll tolerate no insubordination. That's there. Yes, sir. And obey. Miss Macarati out. Murdering rat. Dr. Roddy is no rat. He's the most dangerous psychopathic tyrant in the history of the solar system. Well, how are we going to prevent those mines from being flooded? If any of our ships go near Planet X, they'll be destroyed. You'll maintain this distance from Dr. Roddy's ship. Fortunately, they're close enough to detect his rocket blast, even with a Vader foil producing interference in our view scope. Well, if, we, if we close in on him now, we could capture him before any of his own ships could come to his rescue. Yes, but I want him to feel that he's perfectly safe until the last minute. We'll let him notify Planet X of his estimated arrival time. And we'll start space upon the appearance. Mm. Then he won't be able to call for help. No, neither will we. It'll be a battle just between us and Baccarati. On to the endless reaches of space, Buzz and Happy trail Prince Baccarati, whose ship appears in their view scope as a tiny dotted flame surrounded by a shapeless blur, the effect of the radar point. Finally, both ships are far beyond the orbit of Pluto. Then, as they near the outer defense perimeter of Planet X, Buzz increases acceleration. In his small cruiser, Baccarati smiles triumphantly at Dr. Malaysia. Yeah, we're safe now. Even if any space patrol ship knew we were here, they wouldn't dare affect us close to my own defense. Again, no, Harris. We have outfitted Commander Cole. I'm going to contact Murdoch at the castle. See if mine area 5 has been flooded out. Has it been time yet to have it will take several hours for the floodwaters to reach the mine. Well, that won't hurt to let them know I'm keeping tab on them. Confound it. I know it's interference, but what could be causing it? But it's getting our frequencies. You must be very close. The view scope. Look. The ship is closing in on us. Glengo, why haven't you been watching? But we will clear your hands. You yourself. The space patrol ship. Commander Corey. Can't call for help for my defenses because of this blasted damning signal. Probably we've been on our trail ever since we blasted off from Jupiter's fourth moon. Well, if he wants to fight, he'll get it. The ship is incredibly dangerous. Well, one lucky shot might do it. Take the controls, Mango. I'll mend this face. Awfully close, sir, and I don't think he's seen us yet. He may just be waiting till we get close enough to fire at us. Well, that little ship didn't have much armor, sir. Uh oh. Fire a space torpedo close to his port side, Hap. Let him know we mean business, too. Yes, sir. Nice going, Hap. That came close enough to scrape the radar foil off his hull. Now cut our interference down to 20 units. We can talk to him without Planet X picking us up. Yes, sir. Now, I'll set you. Baccarati, this is Commander Corey. Surrender, or our next torpedo will blast your rocket assembly. It's Baccarati to Planet X, emergency. They won't hear you, Baccarati. This is a private conversation between you and me. Do you surrender, 
Or do you want Cadet Happy to demonstrate his skill at space gunnery? All right, folks. You win. Now listen, Bakunari. I'm going to join airlocks with your ship, and I'm coming aboard. Don't try anything. All right, Commander. Okay, Happy, you take the controls. I'll board Bakunari's ship. A few moments later, the Terra 5 joins airlocks to Bakarati's cruiser. While Happy remains at the control, Buzz enters Bakarati's ship with his ray gun ready for action. All right, Bakarati. Just leave the controls as they are. Stand there beside Melangro with your hands up. Very well, Commander. I'll surrender gracefully. Take me to Terra. I've got news for you, Bakarati. We're going on to Planet X, your ship. I... I don't understand. I heard you order the glacier melted to flood the mine. I to see that you stop that mass murder. And the only way I can be sure is to take you to Planet X. But if they see your ship, my men may destroy us all. I'm notifying Pluto Space Patrol to pick up Terra 5 and take it to Pluto. Our interference is beamed only toward Planet X, so your cut cutthroat won't hear a word. Within a few moments, the Terra 5 is headed back toward Pluto on automatic pilot to be intercepted by Space Patrol ships. Meantime, Bakarati's cruiser, with Buzz and Happy aboard, proceeds toward Planet X. All right, Bakarati. I think it's time you reported the murder to the castle and get this straight. You'll regret it if you attempt to warn them, understand? Yes. Get a report on the heat reflectors near mine area five. Then tell Murdoch you're heading for the polar cap to watch the fun. You got that? I tell him I'm not landing at the castle first, but I'm going to the polar ice. That's right. Now I'll turn on your spacer phone and watch what you say. Prince Bakarati to Murdoch at Black Falcon's castle, Penetech. Prince Bakarati to Planet X. Murdoch, you will find Prince Bakarati. We tried to reach you before, but there was some interference. Uh, yes, I noticed it. Uh, did you follow my orders regarding mine area 5? The letter, Your Highness. The heat reflections were started by remote control. Of course, it would be several hours yet before the flood water reached the mine. I understand. Murdoch, when I enter the atmosphere of Planet X, I'll proceed at once to the ice cap. I, uh, I, I want to inspect the results. Uh, that's all, Murdoch. From a dozen control towers on the enormous Planet X, new scope beams probe out into space and feel with electronic fingers the contour of Baccarati's ship. The electronic ears listen critically to the identification frequency radiated from the small cruiser and then let the ship proceed unchallenged. The watchdogs have recognized their master's voice and having done their duty, watch and listen for remote ships and sounds that may approach over the infinite horizon of space. Then, within the atmosphere of Planet X, Buzz Corey heads Baccarati's ship for the northern polar regions. Visible in the dim light are the atomic heat reflectors and the surging, steaming waters that roar down from the glacier into the valley toward mine area 5. Smoke and rockets, Commander. It's a regular flood. Yes, unless it stops, 10,000 people will meet a horrible death. Well, can't you order Baccarati to tell Murdoch to cut off the heat reflectors? I could, but it would be out of character for Baccarati to commit an act of mercy. See what you mean. Murdoch might get suspicious. Alert the whole planet that the big boss might be in trouble. We'll blast those towers out of operation, Hap. Stand by to fire the space cannon. Standing by, sir. Uh, Corey, listen. Those towers can't be replaced. I have millions of credits in that. Quiet, Baccarati. I'm thinking of 10,000 lives that can't be replaced. But they're subhuman natives of Planet X, most of them. Almost savages. Yeah, look who's talking about savages. The worst of them is worth a hundred of you, Baccarati. Fire! <laughs> Did it happen? We got all of them with one shot. Yeah, but Commander, the water's still pouring down off the glacier. It will for a while, but in that intense cold down there, it'll freeze back into ice before it reaches the mine. Hey, quit looking so sour, Baccarati. You ought to be grateful. We just saved you from destroying 10,000 people. They won't obey me. If they're men enough not to obey you, I'd say they're well worth saving. And that's just what you're going to do, Baccarati. You're going to free them and return them to their homes and families. Get on that space phone and order all your ships here at once. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Now, here it is, Space Patrollers. The one word that can win you a giant rocket clubhouse and $1,500. And that word is... A name for Planet X. The terrifying new planet Commander Corey is investigating. 
A name for Planet X, home of the evil Prince Baccarati, arch enemy of the Space Patrol. Now, gang, here's how to enter the Name the Planet contest. And Space Patrollers in this contest, everyone can get a free prize right away. Just go to the nearest Weatherbird shoe dealer. Maybe Mom or Dad can go with you. The Weatherbird shoe man will give you your free prize. A handsome interplanetary coin album with three swell space coins inside. And along with the album, your Name the Planet contest entry blank. You can also find out how to enter by looking on the back of a package of Good Hot Ralston. That's the new package with a picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the front. So blast off, Space Patrollers. Get your free coin album entry blank and enter the Space Patrol Name the Planet contest today at your Weatherbird Shoe Dealers. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in the frozen polar region of Planet X. Pursuing Prince Baccarati into the shaft of an injuria mine, they're unaware of a huge figure lurking behind the shoulder of rock. Baccarati and the lanes are in here, all right? I hear them down the shaft. Shall I use my atomic lights? Yeah, not yet, Happy. Leave this quiet as I can. This shaft doesn't have any side passages. I'm fine! Happy, what's the matter? Something's happening. It's lifting me off the ground. Uh, it's a giant native. It's crushing my chest. Uh, I'll give him the blast with my rake. Oh, you big fuzzy gorilla. Uh, Finish them up, Ranu! Finish them! Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story on the ice cap of Planet X when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Mike Devery. <laughs> Other players were Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Virginia Hewitt. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Wilson again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Here's the story of the fastest plane of its kind in the world, with the word from the man who test flies it, Joe Lynch. It's the Air Force F-86D Sabre Jet Interceptor, designed by North American Aviation Los Angeles. The Sabre holds the world's speed record at 715.7 miles per hour. Wingspan is 37 feet, length 41, cruising range 500 miles, climbing speed 300 miles per hour. Now by special tape recording, made at International Airport, a well-known test part of the Sabre, Joe Lynch. The D is a one-man interceptor, so when you fly it, you're really on your own. That's why I see to it that I'm in good condition all the time. And one way to stay in good condition is by eating a good breakfast cereal, like rice checks or wheat checks. They're just packed full of energy, and they taste swell. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puff or flake, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. Rice checks... We check. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.